Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Panasonic Press Conference. Thank you for being here today. What we would like to present today is not old news, but a worldwide announcement for Panasonic. To kick things off, I would like to welcome Michael Moskowitz, President of Panasonic Consumer Electronics in the US, and a bit later, Matt Frazier, our Business Development Manager, who will take the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, Panasonic has a long history in cinematography. For roughly a quarter century, we've developed many key technologies that bring innovation to the in that the industry requires. Here's an example of some of the world's first. The tape Vericam with the ability to record slow motion video and led to the beginning of the digital cinema era. The DVX100, enabled 24p recording in a DV format and expanded the possibilities of digital cinema to the creator's world. And the HVX200 adopted the P2 card and provided a file-based workflow for the innovation. And the Vericam 35 dual native ISO enabled high, sensit high sensitivity shooting and evolved a variety of video firsts. So using these technology assets and experience, we developed many new products. And also in the mirrorless category, using our technology, we, we launched numerous industry firsts. In 2009, we introduced the G1, GH1, with the features of full video recording and AVCHD format as an industry first. And later, the GH4 was offered 4K video recording capability. And then the GH5, with 4K 60p, 422 10-bit internal recording became the industry standard. Also to strengthen our position, we joined the L Mountain Alliance with Leica and Sigma. And then we introduced our first, first full-frame mirrorless camera known as the S-Series in March. Our S1R and S1 have 4K 60p recording capabilities, which is another industry first for full-frame mirrorless. Photographers and videographers are very pleased with the high image quality and the camera's reliability. With our knowledge and the technology and en energy, we've developed a new mirrorless camera and would like to unveil some of its features today. This product has a superb video performance grown from the cinema industry and the excellent mobility and functionality developed for mirrorless cameras. We are certain that this new product will change the cinema industry. Ladies and gentlemen, let me share our first new product. This is the S1H. And now, let me introduce Matt Fraser to talk about the technology behind the S1H. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, welcome, everybody. I am very excited to be here because I am 100% certain that this S1H will be a new legend in the cine industry. Allow me to explain why. Industry leading 14 plus stops of dynamic range and full implementation of V log and V gamut for expanded color. V gamut in the S1H has been tuned to closely match that of the Vericam and EVA1. Full frame 3-2 aspect ratio recording in 6K at 24 frames per second and full frame 16 by 9 ratio recording in 5.9K at 30 frames per second. The S1H can record in multiple aspect ratios for different shooting scenarios including 4x3 for anamorphic capture. 4K recording up to 60p, all of this with unlimited recording time and in this compact DSLM body. The S1H has a target price of $4,000 and will be available for purchase this autumn. We in the United States have been given the chance to produce some content with an early prototype of the S1H. 
and we wanted you to get a chance to hear from the director of photography who we chose for this project. Everybody, Alicia Robbins. I thought I got walk-on music. No walk-on, <laughs> I'm sorry. Come on. I asked for Eye of the Tiger, oh well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Alicia, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. And let us know some of the projects we might know you for. Yeah, um, I have been a DP for 16 years, so I've been around. Uh, my most recent project, though, I have a feature that's out right now called uh, Baby Splitters. It's actually doing the festival run. And um, you might have seen two episodes that I just did of Grey's Anatomy. So uh, two episodes were Silent All These Years and The Good Shepherd. Yeah, that, obviously I caught those when I was looking at your IMDb. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure most people looked at your IMDb as well. So uh, for this project, we had told you a few of the features that were in the camera, mm -hmm. and I'm curious, what features had you most excited to try out? Yeah, um, I've been using the GH line for a while and EVA, so I was really excited about the 4K full frame, the V-Log, V-Gamut aspect of the camera, um, that as well as anamorphic. Um, and the sensor size that it's using is very similar to Academy size in film. Um, which is a very classic anamorphic size. So knowing that there's lenses out there already that can be used on this camera, I was really excited about playing with that. Okay, so yeah. a, a little teaser. We will show you some content here in a minute, obviously. Yes. Um, yeah. So what should we be looking for specifically mm -hmm. in what you shot? Pushing the camera to its limits. <laughs> um, I, I really tear my cameras apart when I get them. So um, there's some shots that we did out at the Salton Sea, noon sun, uh, you have to have that dynamic range to be able to push that footage around. So you'll see that two different color gradings on it as well to see how we can move around the footage. Okay. Um, we also did a shot up there that's uh, that was run at 10,000 ISO. So 10,000. Is there? Yes. What should we specifically look for? Um, for that it shot? looks like a Blade Runner shot. So if okay, <laughs> yeah. All right. So hopefully everybody. The dilated knows what that pupil. Is. Yes. Okay. And we ran that at 10,000 ISO. We did do a little bit of grain reduction, but nothing more than what you'd expect on a high high ISO camera. So um, that and also I wanted to throw the camera on a bunch of different heads. So not only just studio mode, but putting it on a Ronin 2. We threw it on a high speed RC car. You'll see that shot in there, um, and a lot of different lighting scenarios letting things fall for stops under exposure. So we really pushed it around. So it looks like you ran it through its paces to see what we it could did. do to, to, to maybe fail on you. Yes, absolutely, yeah. And, and clearly it failed. No. Okay, so we got good results. We got good results. Awesome, yeah. okay. Well, I, I think people are probably hear, sick of hearing me talk. They'll probably hear you talk forever, but <laughs> for me, they're probably sick of it. So I think it's time we run the, the demo. So uh, why don't we go ahead and roll the footage?
All right, so Alicia, I know you got a chance to shoot some footage in 5.9K. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure everybody's kind of wondering what your experience was with that. Uh, yeah. You obviously used Adobe Premiere to cut it. Mm -hmm. And I guess the question is, you know, when would you use 5.9K for your personal work? Um, usually if I want to punch in on something, uh, having that resolution is helpful. And then if you're going to do any post stabilization, you're going to have to punch in anyway, so you can shoot a little bit wider and then use the post stabilization to punch in. Uh, VFX work, having that information there. Um, and, and yeah, I ingested it in Premiere and it, it seemed to work fine, so. Yeah, I think on VFX especially, having all of that information and yep. that extra resolution, especially mm -hmm. if you're gonna downsample, it's gonna clearly make it easier for you Absolutely. To, to be able to chroma, for sure. Yeah. So, um, Also, I, I, I noticed we, we did some lens flares, obviously, so there's some anamorphic telltales that are in there. And, of course. Uh, we, we had chosen to work with Atlas, mm -hmm. um, the Orion series of anamorphics. Yeah. And, um, I'm curious, what did you think of how the Orions played with the S1H, yeah. and ultimately, did you enjoy the experience of shooting with the S1H for anamorphic? I, I did, and uh, what I liked about the Atlas lenses is that they're really compact and lightweight, so that along with the S1H being a smaller body, it made the package really small. Um, when we were out at the Salton Sea, we loaded everything into my SUV, so being able to do an anamorphic shoot out of a back of an SUV was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And you had like 15 people on set, right? That no. was no, not a, not a 15 person crew. <laughs> not okay. At all. No. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it is somewhat liberating to be able to shoot anamorphic with such a compact and lightweight rig. Yes. It's not usually what you expect. No, it isn't. No, that you expect a much bigger package. <laughs> so, with 4K 60p, um, obviously there's your personal use for 4K 60p, mm -hmm. and then there's other applications that you may not consider for yourself. Right. How do you think 4K 60p is going to work for people? Yeah, um, I mean, I was using it for slow motion capabilities and being able to speed ramp, but I, I do know that for documentary and reality, having 60p, 59.94 um, is very beneficial. So being able to have this as an additional body in documentary reality series, I could see that being really helpful. Yeah. Now, obviously, I'm American. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if you could tell by really? the accent. Yeah. So in, in the United States, we have an aesthetic that is cinema, which is 24 frame, yeah. mm -hmm. but I, I don't think people realize that other countries Are have preferences 60. for other frame rates. Right. And Clearly having 60 frame for other applications yes. outside the U.S. is, is clearly beneficial. To Absolutely, them. yeah. All right. So the last piece I really want to touch base on is, this is actually the thing I'm most excited about, mm -hmm. which is that the S1H has this 10-bit capability. Mm -hmm. It's 14 plus stops of dynamic range. Right. It's in the V-log and V-gamut. Mm -hmm. It matches very closely to what we're doing right now with Vericam already. Yeah. Um, we're hyping this up a lot, I know you guys can tell. So the real question is, did it live up to the hype once you actually got it into the color yeah, bay? Yeah, it, it did. Um, it really wasn't difficult to time. Um, and that is one reason why we wanted to do those two extreme different color grades on the same footage out in the desert. Yeah. Uh, all the information was there. So all the, the sand, the clouds had information. So we were able to really push that footage around and it wasn't that difficult to do. Um, and then also even in the low light stuff, it wasn't, it wasn't that difficult in the DIT booth to actually grade that. Yeah, I think some of the night stuff actually, I, I think you were at ISO yeah. 3200. 3200, the, uh, where he was out on the railroad tracks, that was right. at 3200, and that's one of the shots where I let it go completely out, four, four stops under in the foreground. Yeah, and yeah. then you still had some lift there to yeah. be able to work yeah, with. Yeah, we did. So, yeah, yeah, we still had some room. And even that ISO 10,000 shot with the, with the yeah. red eye, I, I, I was yeah, there was just, no light. Yeah, full disclosure, <laughs> I was on set at the time, and I was I was actually nervous to find out what it was going to look like. But I think it like, looked fantastic. Like, what are you doing to my camera? <laughs> yeah, no, it, 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 I think it did well. Yeah, it did. Awesome. It did, yeah. Well, I, I want to thank you for the work that you've done on the project. Thank you. Um, no, I was happy to do it. Yeah, the images are absolutely lovely. And at the end of the day, you know, it, it's really just a camera. It's the talent of you. It's the talent of your team. I had a great team. Yeah, it really makes it look great. So thank yeah. you again. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thanks. I noticed all of you didn't applaud that well for me, by the way. <laughs> so um, I realize the S1H is very exciting news for everybody in here. And its image quality with V-log and V-gamut is something that many of you would love to have in an S1. Well, that's where the SFU2, film, SFU2 Filmmaker Kit comes into play. With the SFU2 Filmmaker Upgrade Kit, you'll get the full V-log, V-gamut, 14 plus stops of dynamic range, and Vericam look, just like the S1H.
you will get 10-bit 422 internal recording up to 30 frames per second 4K in an MOV wrapper, 10-bit 422 over HDMI in 4K 60p for use with external recorders. You'll get LUT viewer during recording. You'll get LUT display and custom functions. High-res PCM audio support up to 96 kilohertz 24-bit and waveform monitor support. The SFU2 will sell for $199 US or 199 euros, and you can expect that to be available this July 2019. So let's talk about the L-mount lenses. As we've already announced, we're going to introduce three new lenses this fall and winter. An f2.8 constant aperture 24 to 70, an f2.8 constant aperture 70 to 200, and an f4 constant 16 to 35. We believe they will work very well together with our S1H. In addition, thanks to the L-Mount Alliance members, Leica, Panasonic, and Sigma, by the end of 2020, 42 L-Mount lenses will be available for the S-series of cameras. But what about those of you with PL or EF lenses? LightCine offers a PL to L adapter, and Sigma offers an EF to L adapter, allowing you to use many of the best Cine lenses available, including 37 Leica Cine lenses and 13 Sigma Cine options. Panasonic's L-mount lenses are developed to be suitable for video recording. With our lenses, you can enjoy excellent expressiveness and beautiful bokeh with less focused breathing. For manual focus, a linear function is introduced to help create repeatable focus pools with a degree of rotation that can be customized up to 360 degrees. In the S Pro series of lenses, we add to this a focus clutch mechanism for a more traditional DSLR lens feel when focusing. And now for our Micro Four Thirds customers. We have an exciting new lens to introduce, the HX1025, and it will begin shipping this July. The HX1025 offers the quality of five bright prime lenses in a single optic. With a constant F17 aperture from 10 to 25 millimeters, that's a full frame equivalent of 20 to 50 millimeters. The HX1025 provides unprecedented flexibility and brightness. Durability is also top of mind in this splash, dust, and freeze resistant design. And for our video focused users, the aperture is declicked, the manual focus ring is clutched for better feel and better focus pulls, and lens breathing is kept to a minimum. Back to you, Dan. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time today. We look forward to seeing you inside stage three in booth number S409 and wish you a great afternoon. Thank you.